Hey guys, it's Julian from Beneath the Bunk Studios and BeneathTheBunk.com. I hope you're doing wonderfully. Today, we are talking about how I film my videos and how I screen record audio from my DAW and get it into the audio that you're hearing in this video right now. Let's get started. One thing I just want to get out of the way right away, when I was first looking into doing this and I was figuring out what I'm going to need and how to do it, I came across the voice meter crappy tutorials like everybody else has. And... Uh, I highly don't recommend trying to use that. I never once was able to get it to work. I know some people get it to work. Every time I tried, I got crazy crackling. I got laggy stuff. I got latency. I got everything in the book that could have possibly been annoying. I highly recommend staying away from that stuff and instead investing a little bit of money and doing it the way that I'm about to show you. So the first thing you're gonna need to know about my workflow is that I use two audio interfaces and it might be the most off-putting part for you and you're thinking, oh my God, I have to spend another $200. No, you don't. Um, just get the cheapest interface that you can find on the internet and you'll probably be fine. It really depends on what you're trying to do and how many outputs and inputs you need, of course. But in most people's cases, um, the cheapest interface that you find is going to be fine. I'm using the Behringer, uh, the Behringer Euphoria UMC 22 is what I'm using uh, with the Focusrite 2i4. The Behringer I got, I believe, used for like 50 bucks, and the Focusrite I got a few years ago uh, for whatever the 2i4 goes for these days, I think like 200 bucks. In the software realm, what I'm doing with my DAW is I have an audio track right here. And I use L1 normally just because it's a nice easy limiter that makes my voice loud and even with whatever music I'm talking about. Um, and I have the input monitoring on at all times. There are different ways to do this in different DAWs. In Ableton, you just hit in, so you're constantly input monitoring. In Pro Tools, you just hit the green I, and then you solo save it so that you can never block it out. Um, in Cubase, you do the same thing, pretty much. I'm using the ASIO for all V2 drivers in Ableton, and that's connected to my Behringer audio interface. That is the audio interface that I'm speaking into. That's the one that this microphone is plugged into. And um, that's the one that Ableton is using as its main audio interface. My headphones are plugged into that as well. Now let's move on to the next most important piece of the puzzle, which is OBS. What I have going on here is the screen recording software. That's what this is. And in order for me to set this up, what I had to do was take two patch cables, they look like this, um, and route each one of the outputs to the inputs of the focus right. I'll take a picture of what that looks like and put it up here somewhere so you could see it. And then, in addition to that, I have an audio input capture, which is this. This is where you're seeing my voice right here. So if you want to make that, you go to the plus sign, audio input capture, um, and then you do create new, and then you select the focus right, um, as opposed to the Behringer one that I'm using. I'm not going to do it because I already did it. Um, but that's what this creates. And then what that is doing is it's taking the output from the Behringer which is receiving audio from Ableton or whatever DAW you're using, and it's routing it to the inputs of the focus right. And then the focus right is sending that audio to OBS. And then it's recording that audio in time with the video that it's recording from my screen. And then that's it. I really hope that doesn't sound too confusing. If it does, feel free to drop a comment and I will be sure to help you out. Honestly, that's pretty much it. The main problem is that your DAW and OBS can't run on the same sound card. That's why it's such an issue and so many people have problems with it. Um, you just need to have two separate sound cards, in my instance, two separate audio interfaces. I really think that's the best way to work. Like I said, I think voice meter is a load of garbage and I think most software, I'm not gonna say I've tried it all, but a lot of the software that is meant to do the same thing that I'm doing here in the software realm isn't gonna get the job done. And if it does, it's gonna be pretty finicky. Uh, in my experience. So I really recommend going about it this way. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you got something out of it. Hope I cleared some stuff up for you. Uh, if I didn't, like I said, feel free to leave a comment down below. Don't forget to drop a like and a subscription, and I'll see you next time.